but even this inner message is also inside the function but in it is inside a specific block and it has that block scope only so we cannot access the every lightning web component is powered by javascript in this video we will explore the javascript concepts that every lwc or developer should know from variables and arrow functions to promises or events and modules all with examples directly from real lwc code let's start with the basics variables and scopes in javascript we declare variables using var let or const the difference between them comes down to scope where the variable can be accessed in your scope var is function scope which means it's available anywhere inside the same function let and const are block specified which means that they only exist inside curly braces in lightning web components we always use let and const for cleaner and safer code let's get into an example here we can see uh, i'm using the same org which we have created in the last video and on the left side i have the vs code setup which also we have did it in the last video and i'm using the same lwc which we have used sample lwc here i have a small code where it is showing the examples of let so we'll change this let to const which means here we have a let outside the block and then inside we have a const message from inside the block and let's see how it renders in the ui i have this html code let me uncomment it and then let's deploy it let's quickly refresh this there we go so here we can see main message hello from outside block inner block message hi from inside block which means this this outside message has scope of whole function but even this inner message is also inside the function but in it is inside a specific block and it has that block scope only so we cannot access the particular inner message outside that block i hope this clarifies the where let and const when to use and where to use now let's go to our second scenario arrow functions and this keyword so let's look at arrow functions one of the most useful modern javascript features especially in lwc the main feature or difference between a regular function and an arrow function is how they handle the keyword this regular functions define their own this but arrow functions use the value of this from their parent scope now let's look into an example how we use it in a real life scenario now let's go back to our vs code and then let me quickly grab a snippet of code for which we use okay let me quickly grab the javascript code as well here we have an output variable which we are using at the red track at the red track is a keyword or annotation that was provided by salesforce to track the variable whenever that variable has been updated throughout the component and in html we are using handle click we have created a simple button and then on click will be showing the output using arrow function so let's see, deploy it and see how it works sorry i haven't imported the track it comes from lwc package as i mentioned it's an out of the box keyword there we go our component has successfully deployed let let us refresh and see the latest output okay now let's click on the button and waiting so first we saw this dot output equals to waiting so that's the loading text which we have give and then we have a set timeout for two seconds so after two seconds we got our fun arrow function kept context but this is the regular uh, function where we are using on the top which lost the context because within one second we have to see the output but let's see in the console log if we have seen that here we can see it shows an undefined so we are trying to display this dot output but it already lost its context but arrow function always keeps it context so here we are giving this dot output equals to arrow function kept context and we were able to see that now let's go to next scenario objects and arrays if we talk about objects and arrays the backbone of almost every lwc data model is objects and arrays in javascript you can use destructuring to extract data easily from objects and arrays so let's this is mostly useful in lwc when handling data from apex you can extract only the fields you need 
you can also clone objects using the spread operator and then this ensures we create a copy not a reference preventing accidental updates to the original data now let's see it in real life example so let me quickly grab the snippet for objects so here we have a simple lightning card and we are just printing out name role and contacts since we have two connected callbacks i'm just moving this out of there to here so here we can see we have declared a constant where name equals to mohan and role is manage and then we created an object for this so this redoing here we can see we have created a const object of contact where it contains name and role variables and here we are directly accessing each variable which is inside the object and then we can easily clone using since i mentioned we can clone using the spread operator here we are doing it this way const contact 2 equals to spread operator contact role developer so we are creating a reference of this original contact instead of updating it directly and we change the role as developer so name will be same uh, stay same only role will be updated for contact 2 so we have added two contacts here and in lwc we are going through all the contacts and we are displaying it let's deploy this and then verify our output okay here we see object come object which is expected because since javascript uh, engine does not by default convert objects into strings so it is trying to print direct object object so let's loop over it and then print individually via this code let me comment out this and then let's try now let's try deploying again then now we should be able to see two contacts with same name and different roles there we go so we have original contact which is intact here and then we created a reference using spread operator and then changed the updated the role so this is how objects and arrays work now let's go to our next concept the spread and rest operators look the same three dots but they work differently the spread operator expands arrays or objects while the rest operator collects remaining elements so let's see it in real life code so let let us go through the code in a minute okay so here we have a, a variable called numbers array numbers array and then we're creating a constant array of one two three and then new arrays where we used rest spread operator three dots on the array and then we are appending four five and then this dot numbers equals to new numbers so and then this dot calculate sum is going to redoing now let me quickly grab the code for this here we can see i have initialized an initial literal array of numbers and then i create i have two methods one is connected callback and calculate sum so here inside connected callback we have a const array of one two three and then we're creating a new array and then we are spreading using spread operator which we have discussed in the previous scenario as well we are spreading the existing array nums and then we are adding four five so now this dot nums equals to new nums so this dot numbers is updated to one two three four five since we have added using spread operator and the next feature is using spread operator now we'll come into rest operator so here we have a method calculate sum and it's arguments as three dots and arcs so these three dots represents as a rest operator so inside this rest operator we, uh, for this we are passing 10 20 30 so what this rest operator does is it collects multiple parameters and converts them into a single array it collects all the parameters and converts them into an array so here we are trying to do const total so we are trying to print the total of this input 10 20 30 output will be 60 and how it is doing arcs dot reduce a b so it is what it is saying is uh take first two add them and then take every next element add the previous sum to the every next next element and then you will get total sum so we are initializing it with zero so this is the best uh, practice approach where if array is an empty array and we're trying to do we'll get an error 
in order to avoid that, we start with 0. And then we add 0 plus 10. And then we our output will be 10. And then 10 plus 20. Next, it will be 30. 30 plus 30, 60. This way, we print total. So let's quickly deploy this. And then verify this code. Let me copy this and put it into, into the callback, connected callback method on the top. Let me move this variable to the top as well. And then let's deploy this code. Now let's see it in the console. Here we can see sum using rest is 60. So this way we got we just passed three parameters and it converted into array and that array has been used to create a total sum. This is how spread and rest operators are used. Now let's go to next scenario. Promise and async. Promise and async or await which handle all asynchronous operations like server calls. In LWC, every time we call an Apex method, we are working with promises. Using async and await makes the code cleaner than dot and chains. The try catch block helps handle errors gratefully, emerged for LWC development. Now let's see how this is done. So for this, in order to make an Apex call, I have a pre uh, different Apex, Apex call which I have created before this video. So it has two methods get contacts and get contacts by account id and which accepts account id as an input so in this we can see i have i'm running a simple query i'm fetching the following fields id first name last name email phone from contact object unlimited so i'm only getting 10 contacts and in the second query i'm filtering it by account id and which i will get inside my lwc now let's go back to lwc and let let me place the import at the top so here we are i have created a variable context and then i'm fetching using await function i have an async keyword and we use an await so we we wait for this get context which my which i'm importing from my apex class once we get the context we are printing it in the console now let me quickly grab html let's try to deploy it oh sorry all right there we go it has successfully been deployed let us quickly refresh and then see how this works. Looks like we have an issue. Let me go to do inside the oh. Let's debug this. Might be the issue since we have two connected callbacks. Let me comment it out the existing callback for now. And then let's deploy it again. And then let's see the output. This should probably fix the issue. Alright, there we go. So now we have all the contacts which was fetched asynchronously and then we have printed all the contact name contact first name last name and email now let's go with our final no last bit now let's go with our next approach is events in javascript in javascript and in lwc events are how components communicate you can use event listeners bobbling event dispatch custom events and now let's see how components communicate with each other in LWC. So here to start with I have a parent component acts as a parent component sample LWC and a child component which named as child component and I have a code in this. So I have I have simple send message function which dispatches an event message and message from child component. And now all I have to do is I have to call this child component inside my parent component and then process the event that has been emitted by child component. Let me quickly grab the code. So here I am calling my child component here on message handle message. So I have to define this handle message inside my parent component. So I have a received message variable which I have just I created. And then I am getting the event.detail.message. Let us quickly deploy this and then see how child and parent components communicate with each other. Let us, well, looks like I missed to import the child component. Let's quickly import it. Oh, sorry, I don't have any markup here. Right, from child, let's deploy this source. And then now let's deploy the parent code. And looks like I don't need this import. As I missed to deploy my child component, I was getting that error. Since that has been solved now, let's rerun the code. And there we go. We see hi from child. And then, but we are still missing our message hello from child let's see what's missing in it looks like we only see the message from 
like HTML text from child component, but we are not seeing the event. I guess we have to, I mean, to fire the event from the child. So this, what this does is, I'm adding a button and a label and on click send message. So this will trigger this event and then that will be dispatched and parent will be listening. Let's deploy it and check it out, how it works. All right, and it's been deployed successfully. Now let's refresh and see. There we go, we can see our message. Now once we click on this message, message from child should be fired and then parent should be listening. Let's try it out. So there we go. So I have successfully, I'm successfully seeing the event message from child. This is how parent and child communicate in LWCs. And our last final topic, modules and imports exports. Finally, let's talk about modules. How your JavaScript files connect in LWC. Each LWC component is its own ECMAScript 6, ECMA ES6 module, meaning you can export functions or classes and import them wherever needed. Now let's see how this works. Here, I have a additional JavaScript file inside my parent, utils.js, and it has an export function, calculate total. It takes in parameters, price and tax, and then it will return you the total. This is an additional JavaScript where I'm, I have a single export function. So I can import this inside my any other JavaScript and then use that method. So I'm going to import that method into my main component. Now we have imported our utils file inside our main class. Now let me quickly grab the rest of the code. So here I have a total variable which will which is returned by my calculate. And then I'm passing 10 plus 13. I should be receiving 113. Let's quickly deploy this and then see how it works. Let me comment out this callback. So here we have the total with tax 113. So this is how imports and exports work. So now let's do the quick recap what we have covered. So first we have covered variables and scope and then arrow functions and this operator. After that we went through objects and arrays. And then we have got an understanding of how spread and rest operators used and when and where. And then we have used promises and async await. Also, we have discussed about communicating between multiple LWCs, parent child. And at the last, we have went to modules. Together, these concepts form the foundation of every Lightning Web component. In next video, we will build on this knowledge and start coding advanced LWC patterns in real time.